You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I'm back in the saddle today with Rachel. Uh, my name is Jimmy Wong. Hello. And I am the aforementioned Rachel. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. Today, um, we are talking about the new commanders from Wilds of Eldraine, specifically whoa. the most po- powerful ones in the set. Yeah, but not the most, like, they're, we're not saying they're busted or OP. They're just powerful these are the most powerful of the ones that are available cool uh that we're not talking about in the pre-con upgrades of course yeah uh so 10 sweet fiery new commanders uh in this set and uh it's fun to be back on eldraine jimmy wong yeah i, actually, I like it I, I mean other sets did not like eldraine in past there's oh, a lot yeah. of bands but, but you commander, didn't standard yeah eldraine's great or modern or, or modern or, uh yeah. eldraine is great but before we get into it let's talk quickly about our sponsors cardkingdom.com slash command just go to your url bar and type in http colon slash slash www.cardkingdom.com slash command zone actually you don't even need that before stuff to make your way to one of the best websites on the planet in the universe it's card kingdom that's where you're gonna get your magic cards if you need it you can also support the show by doing so and the best part about card kingdom is you can put all your cards in in a single cart you can copy paste the deck list and just go from there bam hit one button you are checking out and you are ready to get your entire deck in one package or just all the new singles and cool things that you've been looking forward to not only that you can choose the special foil variants you can do the special art versions whatever you want card kingdom has a huge supply of stuff uh, and you can select from all that as well as choose the different qualities of cards that you want so you can really have a customized shopping experience and get the cards you need and support the command zone at the same time what a win a triple win in fact at cardkingdom.com slash command while you are booking that card kingdom bookmarking that card kingdom link please bookmark this link too it's ultrapro.com slash command wow. ultrapro has some of the best magic accessories in the business they've got high quality sleeves and deck boxes and play mats binders dice whatever you need to make sure that your board state is clearly represented safe and looking cool real cool because they have all of the license to magic official art so if you like uh if you're into eldraine if you're like eldraine is my favorite plane i want to make sure i get it on a play mat get it on sleeves on a deck box even on a binder sometimes Mm -hmm. ultra pro is the place to go to check that out and you can do so while supporting your favorite podcast we can even be your second favorite podcast yeah or your third favorite but you're still supporting us by using the link (laughs) again ultrapro.com slash command it's my favorite podcast, though. Um, yeah. And the last way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone. And not only is it exciting to join our Patreon right now because of all the cool perks you get, like early access to game nights and extra turns, as well as exclusive content, access to our Discord at certain tiers. But if you want to be on the fan episode of Game Nights, which we just released, you can now audition at patreon.com slash command zone. You just have to be an active patron to audition. We are accepting two patrons, just like we did last year, to be on the show. There's going to be a full description of how to do it as well as the instructions very clear details you'll find that in the show notes below as well as on our patreon but keep in mind that you just need to be a patron in order to audition and you can totally just sign up for the patreon to audition as well we have people do that every single year uh this is a once in a lifetime or i guess once a year opportunity (laughs) to try and get on game nights and come hang out with us play on an episode in this very room it's a really awesome experience we hope you check out the episode we just dropped it was a great time uh, and to do that, again, patreon.com slash command zone. We also, of course, shout out one lucky patron every episode that we dedicate the episode to. So this week's episode is dedicated, dedicated to, to Philip Ash. Philip. You rock. You rock. And you can also audition to be on game nights. <laughs> okay, main topic time. The most powerful commanders from Wilds of Eldraine. Whoa, W-O-E. Uh, yeah. Ten commanders today. Yeah, we're going to be talking about about ten commanders. Oh, actually, maybe nine. Oh. I don't know. Close to ten. Roughly ten c- commanders uh, <laughs> that have the, the strength and the efficiency and the combo potential even to uh, win the game of commander it's hard it, 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 not every legendary creature is suited to be a commander necessarily and yep. these 10 are well suited yeah we have so many legendary creatures these days that talking about every single one of them is not as great of a use of a time rather we'd spend it focusing on the ones that really are powerful and you know if you want to talk about the other ones we always have the comment section for that 
Yeah, this first one is one of my, well, it's my favorite commander in the set. Yeah, and spoiler alert, what about, is this, this special, what's, why is it special, Rachel? Because I played it on game nights. Whoa, upcoming Wilds of Eldraine episode, Rachel, spoiler alert, is both on it and plays its commander, so take it away. Who is it? This is the backup commander for the Virtue and Valor precon. It's Gilwain, casting director. One green and a white for a 2-3 human bard. It says, whenever Gilwain or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Create a royal roll token attached to that creature, create a sorcerer roll token attached to that creature, or create a monster roll token attached to that creature. Okay, let's talk about what the rolls yeah, are. Yeah, what is foremost. going on with these rolls? Um, so rolls are token auras. Yep, it's that, a new thing for Wilds of Eldraine specifically. Yeah. And they have, uh, you're only allowed to have one role that you control attached to a creature. So it'll come in, you'll pick a role, that's the role it has. If you want to give it a second role with a different card, you have to pick which role it keeps. But if an opponent puts a role on it, now it can have two roles because yeah. they're owned by different players. So roles are a little weird. Yeah, but that well, probably won't happen, by the way. You're mostly yeah, putting them on yourself. Mostly. Um and each role has a specific little ability. In this case, the royal role gives the creature plus one, plus one, and uh, ward one. Yep. The, what's the second one? Sorcerer, Sorcerer role gives the creature plus one, plus one, and whenever it attacks, scry one. And the monster role gives the enchanted creature plus one, plus one, and trample. Yeah. Uh, all very good, obviously, and it's just complete free value. Anytime Gilwain or another non-token creature enters. So Gilwain gets to cast themselves in a roll when they mm -hmm. enter the battlefield. Of course. Um, I think we can just say it right, outright. I'm pretty sure the royal roll is my favorite for protection. Ward one is very powerful. It turns out just one. It's like Rhystic Study almost. People don't like paying the one. For um, sure. I, I think you're the first one that you think of is is the ward especially when you're playing a deck like an enchantress deck yeah where you have very important value creatures to protect uh there are probably situations where i would use the monster role depending on like this is the creature i'm loading up with auras or something but yeah, even you're then beater. ward one goes a long way yeah and sorcerer role requires you to attack to scry so just straight off the bat i like the royal role the most but we're going to talk about a lot of different cards here and all of them you know you could cast them in different roles and they could all be equally effective yeah Fine. Choose the uh, choose your role, or let Gilwain choose the role. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this first category of cards that we're going to talk about is uh, cards that like being enchanted or like having all of your creatures enchanted. Starting with one of my favorite pieces of tech in the deck, it's Dream Pod Druid. One in the green for a two-two human druid. Surprise. Uh, at the beginning of each upkeep, love that. If Dream Pod Druid is enchanted, create a one-one green sapling creature token. So it's very easy to see how this is good because typically in aura decks, you have to play the creature, then you have to use another card out of your hand to enchant it. You're down a card. If that creature gets removed, big bummer. With Gilwain out, Dream Pod Druid is just instantly attached with an aura. Boom. Pass the turn, you get a 1-1. One, one. Pass that turn, get a 1-1. One, one. Pass that turn, you get a 2-2. Two, two. Just kidding. You still get a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> so obviously super good. This is just like a random 2-2 two, two, too. It's amazing. Yeah, and it's, it's such a threat that like it it spreads out where your removal needs to go. Where yeah. you're like, oh, I don't want to spend a room, like a sword to plowshares on this stupid 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's making four sapperlings a rotation, you might have to. Yeah. The next is... Uh, <laughs> it's just such a good name. It's so good. You get to say it. <laughs> it's Crond the Dawnclad. With an insane casting cost. Oh, yeah. Six. Green, 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 white, white, white. It's the Selesnia Nip Mizzet. <laughs> 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 it's green, 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 white, white, white. Six mana all together for a 6-6 six, six Archon. It has flying and vigilance. And whenever Krond the Dawnclad attacks, if it's enchanted, exile target permanent. Yeah, you have to remove this almost instantly. If it comes in and just has the random Ward 1 on it, that's annoying. If it has Scry on top of just exiling stuff when it attacks, also annoying. Also just a 6-6 six, six flying vigilance. It's 7-7 seven, seven with any roll on oh, it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it instantly huge buffs it. beater in the sky that yeah. can also block. Krond is a huge problem in this deck and i've been looking for a deck to put him in for a long time so excited that he's here yeah yeah it's the perfect fit for this deck and a great top end card for it as well uh the next combo of cards here are things that enjoy things being enchanted in general and this may have the title and designation of probably 
best card in the deck, I Gotta think. Gotta be, right? It's Kodama of the West Tree. Two and a green for a 3-3 three, three. with Reach Spirit. It's a, it says modified creatures you control have Trample. So if your creature has an equipment, an aura on it, or counter, it's a modified creature. So Kodama and every other creature, when Gilwain is out, instantly becomes modified. And this is whenever a modified creature you control deals combat damage to a player, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. And by the way, your creatures have trample. Yeah. So they instantly have the monster rule, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then you can choose whichever, sorcerer, royal, whatever. And they're bigger. They have trample. They're probably going to get in for damage. Or you're just going to get a bunch of lands. You're going to accelerate your game. This is a three mana creature. Yikes. Yeah, you can follow up your commander with this. Immediately give Gilwain trample, attack with Gilwain, and get a land that same turn. Yeah. So it's uh, I think Kodama's got to be one of the best cards in the deck and an easy pickup for these rolls decks. Uh, the next one is very similar. It's Halvar, God of Battle. It says creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. And you can move aura and equipment around at the beginning of each combat. So Yeah, so it allows you to like take a roll and put it on a token that doesn't get one when it enters. Right. Um, read distribute those auras a little bit but remember only one roll per creature only one roll may stand uh this one comes in the pre-con and it's one of the best cards in the pre-con definitely going in a gilwain deck as well yeah umbra mystic i love the art uh it's a two 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 and a white for a creature and it says auras attached to permanents you control have totem armor oh my gosh totem armor is so good so if an enchanted permanent you control would be destroyed instead remove all damage from it and destroy an aura attached to it so this will literally save your creatures from board wipes from bad combat blocking it basically gives them another chance at life Ugh. And then they, like, if you can blink them, they'll come in and get another one. Get a free one. Yeah, very good. Uh, this next one I want to talk about is a little bit spendier if you didn't pick up this uh, secret lair, but it's great in this deck. It's yeah. Zinc, Paladin Unbroken. Two white white for a human knight. He's a two four with double strike. And it says auras you control have exalted. So the aura itself has the text exalted on it. So that says whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each instance of exalted among permanents you control. Wow. So I, in this case, I think you probably give Zank the monster role. Yeah. And so immediately he's a three five. And then all of your other like value creatures that have have the royal roles on them, they're going to buff Zank and Zank is going to be this enormous beater. Yeah. So if Zank attacks and you have three other auras on the battlefield, including his, that's four instances of exalted. They'll get plus four plus four yeah. instantly, which is just very nutty. Um, and it has double strike. Yep. So good job, Zank. Also just the best character in the movie. If you yeah. saw Maybe. It's so good. Very funny. Uh, I was so glad I picked up this secret layer. It's really fun. Yeah, me too. Uh, also, just quick shout out for A Tale of the Ages, which is from the set. The it just says card, enchanted yeah. creatures you control get plus two, plus two. It's an enchantment. For two mana. Really good. Very nice. Okay, so Enchantress, right? Yeah, this is as much as it looks like a creature deck because it cares about non-token creatures. This is still an enchantment deck, specifically a constellation deck, mm -hmm. uh, because you're not going to be casting that many auras necessarily. Yeah, Gilwain has an enter the battlefield, so they're not being cast. Right, so, but the constellation still triggers. So you're going to want all of your constellation enchantresses, uh, Satessan Champion, Eidolon of Blossoms. We've talked about them a lot in the past. They're great in this deck, but there are some aura specific ones like Sage's Reverie. Yeah, this one's sweet. It's three and white for an aura enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each aura you control that's attached to a creature. Yeah. So it's instantly going to draw you two cards itself as well as that. And then the enchant creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura you control that's attached to a creature. So wait. Yeah, so it's not an enchantress. My bad. Sorry. Uh, but draws <laughs> cards equal to all of the auras, which is great. Yeah, on one creature, it's two. And then if you have five creatures out, it's going to draw, what, six or whatever, including yeah, itself? It's yeah, ridiculous. it's ridiculous. Uh, but there is a new in like constellation aura creature in the set. And it's in the pre-con. It's great. Tangles man, look out. He's a good boy. What's he looking out for? Auras. A roll. <laughs> cast me, please. Uh, whenever an aura enters the battlefield, notably not cast, under your control, draw a card. Great. So this is built, obviously, for this deck. Yeah. Purpose. <laughs> I also think Rite of Harmony is great in this deck. It's an instant with green and a white. It says, whenever a creature oh, yeah. or an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control this turn, draw a card. It <laughs> also says, flashback to a green and a white. So now, anytime a creature enters, it also enters with an aura, so you draw two cards. Yeah. Again, we're assuming that Gawain is on the battlefield when yes. this happens. Yeah, uh, for sure. Because if she's not, then not so good. But <laughs> Gawain... Needs to be out there when it has Ward 1. Yeah, hopefully. 
Yeah. Um, I like this one too, actually. Femora Enchantress, an old card. Mm -hmm. Green and white for a 1 2. It says Enchantress on it. It says, whenever an enchantment is put into any graveyard from play, draw a card. So, we'll incidentally draw you maybe a couple cards on your opponent's stuff. But in your case, your auras, when they go, even though they are token auras, they will still hit the graveyard and still trigger the Femora Enchantress. Yep. As your creatures die, that will also trigger the Femora Enchantress. Yeah, this deck has no problem drawing cards. That for is sure. for sure. And I love Enchantress decks because it's already on creatures that do things that you want to have happen. You don't need to put in an extra card draw spell. You know, it'll just you're just going to get it from the Enchantresses. There is also a lot of constellation effects that make tokens. And while the tokens don't come in with auras, it helps you go wide mm -hmm. uh, without necessarily investing a lot in the board, uh, which is a big danger in this deck, is yeah. over over investing and getting blown out. Uh, so I think this deck probably wants Siona, Captain of the Pileus, uh, which when it enters, it digs for an aura. So maybe you have auras in your deck, maybe you don't. But it also says, whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, create a 1-1 one, one white human soul creature token yeah very good uh same similar thing with the johnny's chosen whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control you make a 2-2 white cat creature token and if the enchantment is an aura you can attach it to the token so a johnny's chosen can be out and then you make a token and then it's like hey the enchantment came in you can send it over to that token so you can actually find a way to keep your original creature un mm. and just start throwing it on these cats instead which is cool because maybe you want the scry one and you don't care if it dies in combat yeah etc uh, Archon of Sun's Grace is one of the best constellation creature effects in the game. It makes Pegasuses with lifelink every time an enchantment enters. Uh, seems quite strong in this deck. Yeah, this card is just nuts. I love it in my Samwise Gamgee deck. Oh, it's man. Jahira, Friend of the Forest. It just says tokens you control have tap add a green mana to two and a green creature. So each of the auras attached to creatures, including the one that will enter on Jahira if your commander's out, can tap now four mana. And they don't have summoning sickness, so you yep. can do it the turn they come in. Yeah, I every time I was goldfishing this deck with Jahira on the battlefield, the deck explodes. Like, yeah. it's so powerful. You just start chaining everything together, right? For sure, yeah. I think because this is a constellation deck, uh -huh. and because you want a lot of enchantments all to enter at the same time, that it's possible this deck wants multiple big blink spells. Okay. Like Lazel's Acrobatics. Love that. It's a really sweet one when you roll a d20, right? Yeah, you roll a d20, and then depending on what you roll, you either blink your board once, or you blink it, and then they come back on end step. Yeah. And having those two huge constellation triggers all at the same time means you're going to draw a ton of cards, mm -hmm. you're going to make a ton of tokens. Like, Eerie Interlude does roughly the same thing. And I don't think the deck wants a ton of them. Again, it's an aura deck. But if your commander's on the board and you have a constellation effect, this is a great way to surprise people with a huge amount of value all at once. Another cool blink effect that I found has been really interesting with rolls, it's really good with Elevir, and it's also very good with Gilwain, is Skybind. Uh, it's quite this, sweet. It is awesome. It is a three white white for an enchantment. It has constellation. It says whenever Skybind or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, exile target non-enchantment permanent. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So now... Any creature enters with an enchantment, hypothetically. Yeah. So if you blink it out, it'll re-enter, come with a roll attached to it, trigger the constellation, again. and blink it again. Yeah, so you just make these little chain loops go off, and once that starts happening and the Enchantress player takes their 10-minute turn, it's like, uh-oh, we gotta do something <laughs> about this. But they just refilled their hand, oh no! Yeah, Skybind's really quite neat in this deck. Yeah, really cool card, though. Um, Gilwain, I think, is gonna open up a lot of deck building options in the future just mm. for, you know, again, just having enchantment to enter so easily is something that you don't see very often. So keep an eye out for that. That's why it's on the most powerful list. Yeah. Yeah. Enchantress good. Who knew? Enchantress good. This next one's sweet. How about, uh, I was going to say Frozen. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. It's Let Hilda it go. of the Icy Crown. Uh, by the way, <laughs> there have been Ice Queens before Elsa. This is just the most recent one. <laughs> so Hilda of the Icy Crown is two white and a blue for a 3-4 human warlock with a bunch of text. Whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you may pay one mana. When you do, choose one. Create a 4-4 white and blue elemental creature token. Put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control or scry two, then draw a card. 
So, uh, white, blue, and blue especially loves to tap stuff down your opponent's creatures, especially. When that happens, you can pay one and choose any of these three things, and they're all pretty darn powerful. Yeah, 4-4 four, four token is huge. Yeah, one man for a 4-4 four, four <laughs> on an effect that you're already doing is pretty good. Yeah, I, I mean, the first thing that you got to do when you're building Hilda is like, what taps? I want to tap stuff, and I want to tap it now. Yeah. Uh, so I was looking first at stuff that just taps a lot all at once. And of course, cryptic command came to mind. Yeah. One blue, blue, blue. And the third option is tap all creatures your opponents control, but you get to choose too. So you could also counter something and draw a card. Wow. Or draw a card or yeah, bounce you something. Too. You tap everything and counter, pay an extra one, make a four, four, or like tap their whole board down, pay one, scry, draw, yeah. draw again. <laughs> and notably you don't get to pay one for each creature, right? Oh yeah, you do. Whenever oh, you do, so then you'll have tap like an untapped creature. Cre you have like ten triggers on the stack. Then you can tap one for each, or as many as you can pay mana for. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I yeah. Whenever you tap an untapped creature, an opponent controls. It triggers for each creature you tap. That's kind of a win con, right? End step. They pass the turn. Cryptic command. Tap down five things. Pay five four, mana. Four, 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 make four, four, four fours. Four, four. And then, bonk. Yeah, five four fours and just bonk them. Yep. It's pretty sweet. It's uh, quite powerful. And there are a lot of cards that tap everything all at once, including Bluster Squall and Gitzirai Monk. Oh, yeah. Overloading a Bluster Squall is pretty good. Gitzirai Monk is a, when it enters the battlefield, just tap all creatures you don't control. So that's every creature on the board. It has Flash, too. So yeah. you do it on end step and you have a thing. Losing our captains and you Lord of the Rings card. I know that much. Uh, that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, there's just, Blue does this a lot, right? Where you call it delay effects, freezing effects. You often see it in limited where a creature will come in and tap something down and for a turn and you know either add a stun counter on it or it just says it doesn't untap during its next untap step it's a yep. very common effect yep so there's a ton of cards that do all of them at the same time there's a few that tap to tap things down of course uh fate stitcher is one of the best yep uh it's three and a blue for a zombie wizard that taps to you may tap or untap another target permanent it yeah. also has unearth for a single blue which is really powerful yeah fate stitcher is like one of josh lee Kwai's old favorite cards mm -hmm. um and it has no mana attached to using its tap ability which is great right it's kind of like icy manipulator right you can start going through your head and think about it oh wow yeah there was that tap effect oh there's this tap effect too oh that one was etb etc etc appropriately hilda's crown of winter goes with hilda this is a new card from wilds of eldraine it is a legendary artifact for three. It says one and tap, tap target creature. This ability costs one less to activate during your turn. Nice. So one mana to use it at instant speed, no mana to use it on your turn. Then three, sacrifice the crown and draw a card for each tapped creature your opponents control. Whoa, it sounds like a Tamiyo ability. Yeah. Which is She's exactly on here it. Too. Yeah, it's Tamiyo the Moon Sage, <laughs> which allows you to tap target permanent, doesn't untap during the next untap phase, or minus two, do exactly what Hilda's crown does for three mana but for minus two instead. You can get into some loops with uh, with Hilda. Oh, really? Yeah, believe it or not. Uh, Junkwinder says, whenever a token enters the battlefield under your control, tap target non-land permanent and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's next oh, untap. Yeah. What does Hilda say? <laughs> Make a token. Yeah. Now, so, this stops after there are no more creatures yes. to tap. And you, have, you do have to have mana to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to have mana to do anything in this life. But it, does, it does create this sort of like, all right, I will tap that down and I'll make a 4-4 four, four and tap that down. I'll pay one and make a 4-4, four, four, tap that, that down. down. Uh, uh, scry to draw card. Yeah. Randomly. Uh, yeah. And there are a couple of other cards that have the same effect. It's like whenever you draw, tap something down. And yep. whenever you scry, tap something down. Yep. Is Elvish Mariner and Talarian Kraken. Uh, yeah. Both of these will set off chains. Yeah. And this type of deck as you may notice, you're going to want a lot of mana. So you're probably going to be running a bunch of rocks as well as even, like, I could even see you playing High Tide in this kind of deck. I could, yeah. Like, you I need a big explosive. burst instantly and you're going to create a huge effect, knock someone out, freeze them to death, Mr. Ice, Ice to meet you, you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> There are a lot of cards that care about stuff getting tapped down, uh, like your commander, but there's a new one, which is Charay of Numbing Depths. This is two white blue for a legendary merfolk wizard. When Charay enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. Whenever you Stunt. tap one or more untapped creatures your opponents control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each 
turn. Yeah, pretty good. Obviously, you want to do this a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, other cards that just tap stuff down, Timon, Youthful Geist, just at the beginning of each combat, you tap up to one target creature. So that's just a repeatable effect. And it goes to fetch Rhoda, which says whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes tapped, if it hasn't been declared as an attacker, you put a counter on Rhoda. So yeah. she gets real thick. Yeah, it's sweet. You can just play these two in the deck. They basically draw each other every time. Mm -hmm. Pretty sweet. Verity Circle draws cards when you tap stuff down. Uh, both borrowing 100,000 arrows and Theft of Dreams draw cards for each tapped creature target opponent controls. Yeah, so you probably only need to run a couple of these effects as well as like the Tamiyo thing. These yeah. are both three mana, notably Tamiyo's like five, mm -hmm. but it's a great way to refill your hand. It also does assume that your opponents have creatures to tap down. That's true. <laughs> At some point, they have to learn the lesson. They're not going to untap. Yeah. Oh, there's also Scroll of Isildur. Wow, we've mentioned three Lord of the Rings cards I now. I know, there was like a weird tapping something going Yeah, on. on the second chapter, it's tap up to two target creatures, put a stun counter on each of them, but you also just steal an artifact at the beginning of this team, yeah. which is pretty sweet. And you draw for each tap trigger as, or each tap creature as yeah. the third yeah, chapter. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. kind of does it all in this deck. Okay, what about some uh, Destruction? I yeah, if tapped is not enough for you, if you want them gone, you can play Sunblast Angel, which enters the battlefield and destroys all tapped creatures. Pretty good. Uh, this new one is uh, Illithid Harvester has an adventure on it, and it says for X blue blue sorcery tap X target creatures. They don't untap during the controller's next untap step. It's like Icy Blast. Uh, and then when the Illithid Harvester itself enters the battlefield, you pay five mana for it. You turn any number of target tap non-token creatures in face down. They become 2-2 two, two horror creatures. Yep. And they're just horrors now. Yeah. That's like Blue's way of exiling stuff sometimes is just making them turn upside down. Yeah. It's also <laughs> that removes like commanders are down now. There is no opportunity to send them to the command. Yeah. Zone. They're not manifests or whatever. Nope. You can't flip them over paying the mana cost. They just have to die somehow. Yep. You got to figure out how to kill them. Yeah. Uh, the other brutal way that this deck could win the game, whether it gets an instant speed board is Will Breaker. This says Ugh. whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbreaker. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going to tap that, but actually I'm going to take that. Yeah, with a Fate Stitcher and maybe an untap ability as well. There's also a lot of cards that untap stuff. If you're running that like Pinger-esque route where you want tap abilities, yeah. it's nuts. Yep. Uh, so that's Hilda. This is a very controlling deck. <laughs> this is, this yeah. is like... White-blue control? No way. This is a... Uh, your opponents are going to be tired by the end of it. And that's sort of the, that is the, what the deck do. Yeah. So to speak. The so uh, make sure that you have a, a plan to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just tap their stuff down and be like, I'm going to scry and draw. It's like eventually scry make four draw. fours. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually make fours. <laughs> You're trying to kill them. And there is a second yeah. ability on Ilsa, Elsa as well. Here. It puts counters it puts on all counters your four on fours. Your yeah. yeah. On each creature you control. Yeah. So that could be it, right? Make three, four, fours, make them all five, fives. Yeah. Go nuts. Just make sure you've got a plan to close out the game and make sure that you have another deck that's a little less controlling to play afterward. Yeah. <laughs> All Your right. opponents will also be very cold afterwards. Yeah, yeah. They'll be shivering. I'm like, oh my goodness. And cold towards you as they're like, please don't play that deck again. <laughs> this next one is as red as they come, Jimmy Wong. Yeah. Later. From ice to fire, it's Imodane the Pyro Hammer. Sounds like an AI made that name up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does feel like they threw a, bar or a, a, a yeah. dart on the red dartboard. The, yeah, Pyro plus Hammer. Got it. Yeah. So it's two red red for a 4-4 four, four legendary human knight. Whenever an instant or sorcery spell you control that targets only a single creature deals damage to that creature, Imodane deals that much damage to each opponent. So Yikes. if you lightning bolt a single creature on the battlefield and Imodane is out, three damage to each opponent instantly. Pretty good. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of Arc Bond, but yeah, just for your totally. opponents. Uh, Arc Bond's like whenever you deal damage to a creature, you deal that much to each creature and each opponent. Yeah, this is nice though because it doesn't actually wipe the board because yeah. Arc Bond with an Imodane out, if you do four damage, you're going to kill your Imodane. Right, yeah. So this is awesome. This just is the deck where it's like cast instant and sorceries. This is totally me, by the way. Yeah. That single target with damage <laughs> and then it's going to deal to every opponent. So I want to talk about this because originally when I was building Imodane, and I was looking for cards to put in this category and I was like, how can I hit a creature with the most amount of damage? Right. And you're trying to put cards in Odane, Imodane. Right. Yeah. Imodane. In, in, in Modane. Mo and Modane. Yeah. Uh, 
And there are fewer good options than you think. And I, I think the real way that you build this deck is a couple of those effects, mm -hmm. like, you know, lightning bolts and abrades and sort of the normal ones that you run and just every single damage doubler that exists. <laughs> because how damage doublers work or damage triplers in Fiery Emancipation's case. Yep. And City on Fire. And City on Fire is if you hit a creature with a lightning bolt, it deals nine damage to that creature. Mm -hmm. Imodane's like, nine damage? I think it's going to be 27. Oh, because it sees the original damage tripled, and yep. then it, Imodane also gets tripled by the Fire Emancipation. Right. Wow! So one lightning bolt deals 27 damage to each of your opponents if you have, the, <laughs> if you have your commander and a Fire oh. Emancipation on board. So this deck basically is don't play Imodane until you're ready to kill and delete everyone on the board. Exactly. Uh, and and like even doublers are great because if you hit a lightning, like a lightning bolt goes to six, six and then it goes 12. to 12. And yeah. that's only three damage. Wow. Uh, so yes. Yeah, if you had like an X red red spell, then it's going to be even crazy. Even more. Yeah. Uh, so Fire Emancipation, City on Fire are going going to be your triplers uh we also have Solfim mayhem dominus will double your non-combat damage furnace of wrath dictate of the twin gods the all classics. like you're putting all of them in there yep even the dangerous ones <laughs> yeah those are damage doublers specifically in triplers and then you have the enhancers so this is like torbrin thane of red fell yeah uh storm king's thunder which is an instant that says whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery you copy that spell x times it's x red 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 so this is a fun one it's not exactly a tripler it's good if we well, have an a, enhancer. It, yeah, yeah yeah it's an enhancer so it just it just will copy it a lot and this is a red deck i think this is going to be like you know you cast mana you cast geyser. a mana geyser and yeah. you're like i cast this i cast storm king's thunder where x is four and then i cast a lightning bolt and the lightning bolt is copied four times and you know what that means you're dead everyone's dead yeah <laughs> and there's also all of the rituals in red as well yeah. that you're probably playing in this deck uh yeah very 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 powerful abilities here but if Lightning Bolt isn't good enough for you, there are some ways to do more than three damage to a creature, starting with an old classic. Scred. Scred Red. It's just a one mana instant. It deals damage to target creature equal to the number of snow permanents you control. So in your mono red deck, very commonly you will be running all snow lands. So this could be one mana deal seven. One ma or in my case, like one mana deal three, because yeah. I can never get past three lands, apparently. It's a Lightning Bolt. Yeah, it's a Lightning Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Flame Slash uh, is also just a great one mana deal four damage to target creature. Pretty yeah. good. I think those ones are like as far as I would stretch. Other than that, there's like a bunch of really, really good spells that incidentally hit creatures with damage anyway. Like Mizium Mortars is great in this deck because it's right. both deal four damage to target creature you don't control and overload three red red, which is uh, board wipe red essentially. Red, yeah. And kill everyone at that point. Yeah. If well, actually, no, it's each creature, so it, it wouldn't it, trigger. It, it only targets one thing. So if you cast it as a board wipe, uh, it doesn't gotcha. trigger Imodane. Yeah, but if you yeah, cast yeah. it as a targeted spell, it does trigger Imodane. So it's yeah. either burn or a board wipe if yep. you're in trouble. Yeah, that's great. And like, then you have Lightning Bolt. You have a Braid, like you mentioned earlier. By the way, I think every red deck should just run a Braid. A Braid's awesome. It's Kills awesome. Bolas' Citadel. Did it today at lunch. Ooh, nice. Uh, Virtue of Courage is a new one from Woe. Uh, its instant side is one in a red. It deals two damage to any target. And then the other side is whenever a source you control deals common damage to an opponent, you may exile that many cards from the top of your library. You may play those cards this turn. So you just exile 27 <laughs> cards off the top of your yeah, library with this pretty, enchantment out? Pretty tightly, yeah. Yeah, sick. <laughs> it's a really wild draw effect for a red burn deck. I want to mention this one. It's Nahiri's Warcrafting. Oh, yeah. This one I feel like got skipped over, and it's actually really good in this deck. It's one red red for his sorcery. It deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Then you look at the top X cards of your library where X is the excess damage dealt this way. You may exile one of those cards, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn yeah you know, five, five is equal to one card. yeah you just still get one exile out of it right yeah it just cantrips and it deals five damage which is you know for three feels expensive but it does a lot yeah um electro dominance isn't great x spell uh, and then you can cast a card from your hand by the way electro dominance can also just go face which is important i think you, you want to have at least a couple of options in here that can go face like comet storm or whatever because mm -hmm. in the very case that there are no creatures you may still just be able to burn someone out yeah, I, what I really like about Electrodominance is it gives a sorcery instant speed. Right. Um, so Electrodominance gives you both damage that you can target at a creature, and it can, like, sneak out a Flame Slash or something at like that. At the same that, time. And where then... in response to removal, because you've got a target on your back. You're ra you're driving a race car, you yeah. know? So being able to move at instant speed really makes this deck a lot more resilient. Um, yeah. And a lot more flexible. 
Uh, this next card in our big splashy burn it down category is actually one of our old preview cards. Is it? Yeah. That's impact cool. resonance. Great Jesper icing art as well. It is. One in a red for an instant. Impact resonance deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures where X is the greatest amount of damage dealt by a source to a permanent or player this turn. So again, that could just be 27 damage divided as you choose amongst any creatures. Now, yeah. this won't trigger your commander, but it's after you've done the huge hit with it. Yeah, it will if you only target one thing. Yeah. As yeah. long as you as long as you target one creature, it will deal that much damage. Yeah, so then it goes twenty seven to one, back to you, times that by three, everyone's yeah. just dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, you deal eighty one or whatever, to a yeah, yeah, yeah. At one time and then you yeah, you deal eighty one. Eight eight twenty seven times three is eighty one. Yeah, oh my with God. a tripler. You have to have yeah. a tripler out. Yeah. Even with a doubler, it goes three to six to uh twelve, 12 to twenty four or whatever. To a creature and then it deals 48 to them yeah that seems yeah, fine yeah it seems okay it's a little bit win more because you do already have to be going off for this card to be as good as, as it is but yeah. it will certainly finish yeah uh what you need uh, to do <laughs> okay okay this one cracked me up we gotta read shivan meteor okay it's three red red for a sorcery shivan meteor deals 13 damage to target creature <laughs> That's so sick. It also has to spend two for one red red. So everyone so you sees, the meteor, sees coming. the meteor coming. If someone's playing the dinosaur deck, they're like, no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> It's That's pretty dumb. Uh, putting this on suspend is like all of your opponents have eyes on you now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah. it's quite dangerous, but it's it's pretty fun. There's also I like this meteor swarm for X red red red. You deal eight damage divided as you choose amongst X target creatures or planeswalkers. No, you you can just, just play, play red red red. Yeah, red, you don't even one. need yeah red red one, and yeah. then you just go single creature for eight. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Pretty, it's a pretty sweet deck. Uh, of course, you can play all of the cards that love damage. Yeah. Uh, this is a Turalf God of Fury deck for sure. Neheb the Eternal deck for sure. Mm -hmm. I like. I don't know if he's great in the deck, but I think Brash Taunter and Stuffy Doll are great includes in this deck because, it, like you said, if your opponents don't have creatures anymore, yeah. Yeah. you have a creature that is indestructible that you can keep throwing damage at that will also throw damage. Yeah. And Brex Taunter also just has the random fight clause on it, too, so yeah. it could just do the thing regardless. For sure. Yeah, very cool. They're both good ways to redirect those creature burn spells at face, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, I love this next card. It's going straight into my Marchesa this deck. This card's cracked. It is cracked. It's ridiculous. They keep giving us cracked cards to black red for yeah, some reason. Yeah, would like, I guess it's because it's sweet. <laughs> What, because Rakdos is sweet? Just give them all like, the sweet stuff? Yeah, it's just, it is sweet. Like, red, it black sweet. feels, like, sweet. Yeah, it's, like, playing stuff from Exile. Yeah. It's, like, doing cool stuff. It's, like, <laughs> It's rocking yeah, now. for it's sure. Rakdos. That's Rakdos, yeah. Okay. All right, read it. It's Rowan, Scion of War. So, Rowan got de-sparked, so did her brother. Mm -hmm. uh, aren't they also dead? No, their parents died. Oh, their parents died, yeah, yeah. They okay. might as well be dead, Jimmy. <laughs> They're going, this is a very emotional time for Rowan. Well. Yeah, yeah. That's why Rowan is just go popping off <laughs> yeah. here. So it's one black red for a 4-2 human wizard legendary creature, obviously, with Menace, Menace. And it has this spicy ability, tap. Spells you cast this turn that are black and or red cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you lost this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. So you play Rowan, you find a way to lose a bunch of life, you tap it, and then boom. All of you, your spells cost that much less. Yeah. All of Wow. I thought when I first read this, I was like, it's just the next spell, right? No, nope. surely it's or the rest just of the, the turn. next spell. <laughs> yeah, it could be like lose 20 life, tap this, and then X red red someone, kill them, burn them, whatever. There's yeah. lots of different things to be done here. Uh, worth noting, only reduces the cost of red and black spells. This isn't an Eldrazi deck. This is something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so the, the co unless... <laughs> You play a banned card. Oh, prior banned. It's not banned. banned. It's Painter's Servant. <laughs> yeah. So you can play a Painter's Servant, choose black or red, and now all your spells and plays and permanents are also that color. So. That's silly. That's not what you're doing. But no, it's but cool. You, I mean, you could. Yeah, yeah, not in this deck, because unless you have a bunch of colorless spells. No, yeah. you paint all your Eldrazi's red, and you reduce, see, a combo. And someone's look, squinting, they're like, are you sure that's red? And it's like, yeah, it's yeah, painted yeah, red. it says red. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously life is a resource. That's why I love this in my, my Marchesa deck, because I'm always ancient tombing myself out to death. But there's also tons of other cards in black and red that will just get you to a low life because you're paying life to use it. Yep. Uh, they're classics. We love them. Uh, starting with Bolas' Citadel. Yay. Play it's the top card of your library. It's going to cost you that much life equal to this mana value. Yeah, and this deck can only cost black, black, black. Yeah, yeah. 
That's crazy. Yeah, I. Uh, that's a crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, Bolas' Citadel is going to be one of the best cards in the deck, as it often is. As is Crick, son of Yogmoth. This could just cost nothing. Yeah. Except for your life. For sure. So uh, it's four and then three for Xian mana, so you can pay four mana just straight and then six life for it. And it says for each black mana and mana in the cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana. And then whenever you cast a black spell, you put a one one on Crick and it has life link. But really. You're just because you could right. You could go Rowan Sign mm -hmm. of War, play Crick for four on the next turn. Yep, tap you've it. Lost six. You've lost six life. You use an Ancient Tomb. You've lost eight. Cast an Eight Drop for free. Yeah, that has no other colored mana. Yeah, maybe your Painter yeah, Serpent. Yeah, yeah. But That's anyway, there's just a lot of reduction happening. Either Crick is out or it's not out. Either way. It's going to be very good in the deck. Anything you can do to reduce the colored pips of the spells you're casting is going to go a really, really long way in this deck. So that means playing Crick. That means probably playing both Defilers, Defiler of Flesh and of Instinct. Uh, both of those mean that when you cast Permanence, you can pay two life instead of black or two life instead, instead of, of red. red. It yeah. gives them sort of a pseudo Phyrexian mana thing. Yeah. There's also like Command the Dread Horde, which just has you lose a ton of life and put yeah. a ton of stuff on the battlefield. I mean, right? Like there's just so many Fire ways to Fire Covenant pop off here. says pay an additional life. You deal X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. You can oh, just yeah. clean up the board, spend eleven mana, cast something else for free. Yeah. Like if you're if you're really in dire straits, I don't know why you would need this card, but you could. It's Wall of Blood. I think you would play this card in this deck. Yeah. Because you could just play Wall of Blood, pay one life, and it gets plus one plus nil in a turn, go like oh, I'm gonna pay seventeen life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just you know, to have a gonna, huge wall, sure. And then I'm going to cast an X spell for X is equal to 17 or whatever. Yeah. Treasonous Ogre does the same thing. Pay three life to make a red. Yeah. Like any time that you can turn your life into mana and then that's also making you more, uh, like reducing the casting cost of your spells. Yeah. Right. Rowan is, Rowan is just saying where X is the amount of life you lost this turn. So it's anything, right? Yeah. yeah. Fetch lands, uh, Necropotence, where you can just sit there and again, similar to Wall of Blood, just pay, pay, pay 10 pay, pay. life. Do something crazy. You're not going to see those cards this turn, but it's a free life outlet. Yeah. Uh, Razaketh means you pay two life, sacrifice a creature. You could sacrifice Rowan, technically. If you're going to win that turn. Oh, interesting. You could sacrifice Rowan, go find another piece, cast it. Right, right, uh, right. With Razaketh. Right, you'd have to another pay some life prior and then yeah. tap Rowan. And then you're like, cool, the last thing I need to do is sack Rowan. Yeah, you want to do it before you've paid a lot. You want to sack everything else to Razaketh before yeah. you've done that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Font of Agonies. This is a fun card. You played this card. Recently I did. Yeah, it's in my Nashi deck. Uh, it says, whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on Font of Agonies. Then one in a black, remove four blood counters from Font of Agonies to destroy target creature. Yeah, just one black for an enchantment. Seems pretty efficient and just a constant, consistent removal outlet as well. In a combo deck, I don't like to run a ton of interaction. Yeah. But I, you have to run enough to be able to answer stuff that turns off your your deck. Like, you can't pay yeah, life for yeah, or yeah. something like that. So having something that's this tidy and can answer multiple creatures, I think is quite good. Yeah. Um, and then obviously other ways to pay life. Josh has a Greven Predator Captain deck. So if you pay 20 life, this thing gets plus 20 plus 0. And then when he attacks, you can sack another creature and then you draw cards equal to that creature's power and you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. So it's just a way to just have the scariest Greven ever and occasionally draw some extra cards from it. Yeah. And, you know, Villas likes when you pay life. <laughs> draw that many cards? Yeah, that seems okay. Yeah. So that's lost of life so again ancient tomb will do it mm -hmm. nana confluence you're probably running all of those in this yeah. deck right and villas only cast black 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 if you've if you can cast it after your commander those are all the ways that you can pay life those are all of the payoffs for paying life of yeah. course the payoffs for paying life in this deck are giant game ending x spells yeah and that's how you win the game right oh yeah so exsanguinate obviously is it x black black each opponent loses x life you gain uh, life equal to the life lost this way Pretty good. Huge. The life got loss and like the life gain and the drain is is obviously a yeah. huge deal. Torment of Hailfire is the other X black black one. Uh, yep. If you want to go the burn route, you can just fireball them out. You could play Comet Storm. Um, this is the most yeah flavorful yeah. one. Crackle with power is great. So it's X X X red red and it deals five times X damage to each of up to X targets. So you can do X is equal to three. You pay 11 mana and it's going to do 15 damage to three different targets usually people's faces yeah i mean if you can if you can reduce this enough then crackle with power will close out a game for you no problem yeah you're gonna have to have a lot by the way this is like you do it once and then wow i've just lost 20 life to try and do this effect so it's you got one big turn you gotta do it on that turn yeah yeah um i i think this card is really underrated cut to ribbons oh this card's uh, great it's great 
like I've died to, to ribbons so many times. Yeah, where from the graveyard. Yeah, it's one in a red for a sorcery. It deals four damage to target creature. Great, but you can cast it from the graveyard. It says each opponent loses X life. X black for black. black. X black black. Yeah. yeah, pretty good. Really tidy. Then you want draw spells. Yep. So this is how you, on the big turn, you've lost 15 life, 20 life. You play Commune with Lava for X red red, exile the top 20 cards of your library with ever X. Mm-hmm. Uh, March of Reckless Joy, uh, you get to choose two from the ones that you exile. Probably looking for an, uh, an Exsanguinate or a Torment of Hailfire or something yeah. like that. And again, every spell you cast that turn that's black and or red is going to get that reduction. So you do the Commune with Lava, you dig 20 deep, you look the next one, and then boom, you just win. If you want to go to the tutor route, this is the coolest tutor I have ever seen for this deck. It's <laughs> Diabolic Revelation. Yeah, this card sucks otherwise, right? Yeah, but if it costs two black, then it's great. It's X3 black black. So very expensive. But it says, search your library for up to X cards and put those cards into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Yeah. If your spells are reduced by 15 and you can cast this for X equals 12, you can go find some cool stuff and certainly win the game. Yeah. You're probably going to grab like your pyroblasts. Like Tibble's Trickery. Tibble's Trickery. Any sort of protection. Yeah. Plus. Uh, Imps mischief right just to like help yourself get through the turn because if someone's going to try and stop it if they can see it coming yeah even maybe even the like extra turn uh before you end the game spells like warrior's oath and stuff seem quite good in this deck i think those are actually really good in this because you can you can cast the commander you can cast that and be like if i like i'm gonna have an extra turn right now and i'm gonna have one tap on this commander to go nuts yeah you can't stop it if you do great i die (laughs) but hopefully at that point you've found a way to commune it with lava at instant speed get the tibble trickery yeah right and you can do it pretty early too that's the thing oh for sure your commander's three mana three yeah three mana and then you just play your necropotence or your uh wall of blood yeah or your treasonous Treasonous ogre ogre. and you can just make x equal to just insane amounts it's a way to give your commander both haste and to give you that extra turn right now before your opponent's on tap yeah yeah. Uh, really crazy. Speaking of haste, haste is pretty important in these kinds of decks, right? Really, really is. Um, Thousand Year Elixir is always good in decks when your commander has a tap ability. It's very good in this one because you can untap Rowan and tap her again. Oh, so you double what the amount is? Yeah, yes. That's very good. Uh, anything that untaps Rowan is probably good. I sort of think that in this deck, you're more likely to just pay more life rather than worry about untapping Rowan. Yeah. Because it's sort of easier to just pay more life than untapper. Yeah, if you're especially if you're optimizing, right? You, if you're playing tutors and all that stuff, you don't care about untapping her because you just need to tap her one time. Right. Um, but Thousand Year Elixir also gives her haste, so I think it's it is good enough in this deck. I like Bitter Reunion a lot because right. it does it's like one of the best red cards ever printed. When it enters the battlefield one in a red, you discard a card, you can draw two cards. And then additionally, at any time, you can pay one sack it and give your creatures haste until end of turn. So it's like great early, and then later on when you need it to pop off, it's just sitting there waiting to say, Cool, is this the turn you need haste? Here you go. Take it. And win. Yeah, it's it's I, one of my favorite cards has been printed in the last year. Uh, I think this is a great Sting deck. Sting is an equipment that gives the equipped creature plus one, plus uh, one, yeah. and haste. And then at the beginning of each combat, untap equipped creature. Only matters on your turn because you only yep. re- activate Rowan on your turn. But but it, it gives it haste immediately, so you can tap it now, untap it at combat, second main, tap her again, and then you can go off second main. Yeah. Lightning Greaves also gives haste. Curse Mirror, you could play your commander... Just and Im- curse mirror it just immediately it just immediately it. have it yeah, yeah that's pretty sweet i mean it's that kind of deck where it's like you're it's very projected what you're doing your opponents are going to be afraid of your deck so you need to be prepared to be like all right this is the turn i have the huge mana spell i have the jessica as well yeah. or just some enormous turn i mean this is pretty close to being a cdh commander i would assume yeah i mean i, w- I would think that um What's because the five mana sorcery that everybody plays? Ad nauseum. Ad nausea. Yeah, yeah. Like you ad nause and draw your whole deck. Yeah. And you've paid all that life and now you have all your cards. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, seems pretty yeah. Good. that seems pretty good. And then the other, there is already the one in black and a red uh, madness discard commander. Uh, yes. That is also a CDH commander on as you. well. Yeah, Anya. So. Yeah. I think like the bolt lands in this deck are absolutely absurd because you can bolt them in, immediately lose oh, three life, yeah, yeah, and yeah, they're yeah. both X spells. So Agadim's Awakening, Shatter Skull Smashing. There's just, this deck is so powerful yeah and and your commander is really the linchpin for it 
Wow, how do I decide between my favorite commander between this one and the last card? I well, know. there's more commanders coming up. We've got five more commanders to talk about, including the one that I think is the most generically powerful in the No, set. impossible. I think I think it might be. But first, we've got a few words from our sponsors. Josh, do you know where we put the what is going on here? How's it? How's it? Why is everyone dressed like you? I know, isn't it great? I got tired of going to a dozen different websites looking for new employees, but now with my Quai guys, I can be everywhere all at once. Why don't you just use Indeed, the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. They have powerful tools that streamline the hiring process and save you a ton of time. Like Indeed's hiring platform, where all the hard work is done for you. They match you with quality candidates the moment you sponsor a post, and only ones whose resumes meet your job description. In fact, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. That is impressive, but could we hire more Joshes? I think we have enough. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash command zone. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash command zone. Just go to Indeed.com slash command zone and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Again, that's Indeed.com slash command zone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. How's it, everybody? Working hard or hardly working? Hello, Josh. You're looking beachy. Yeah, it's vacation time. Later, suckers. Um, you do know you're still here, right? Oh, yeah, I'm way too busy to have a real vacation. But with my Raycon wireless earbuds, I can take a vacation right here in the office. I've got my summer vibes playlist and a brand new audiobook, and Raycons are the best way to listen to all of it. Their custom gel tips are super comfortable. The battery life lasts me all day, and they even have noise isolation mode, which I can activate with simple tap functions. So none of you can disturb me while I'm on my mind beach sipping my mind drinks. Plus, Raycons come at half the price of other premium brands, so picking up a new pair is way cheaper than, for instance, buying plane tickets to Barcelona. Wait, you were just in Barcelona. That was work. That's different. This is work. Uh, I'm sorry. I cannot hear you. Raycation. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, Command Zone listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash command. That's buyraycon.com slash command to save 15% on Raycons. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. You browsing for some new tech? Yeah, I'm building T-Mount and Architect. Ooh, how about Zergo and Ojitai? Did you just drag and drop that card image directly into your deck? Yep, with Architect, you can drag and drop card images from EDH Rec or Scryfall directly into the deck list. No typing required. That is so cool. Ooh, okay, check this out. I'm gonna drag and drop Dragon Storm into the deck, and then boom, I'm gonna drop a bunch of dragons on the battlefield. A nine drop, huh? Seems ambitious. It was just for the pun. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. All right, we're back. Did you count how many words there were mm. in the ads? Because <laughs> this next commander does care about counting. He does. It's Talion, the kindly lord. Aw. Two blue black for a fairy noble. He's a 3-4 with flying. It says, as Talion enters the battlefield, choose a number between 1 and 10. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life and you draw a card. Now, before we even get into this, we just put out an entire episode where you and Josh sit down and break down what is the actual best number to choose yeah. with Talion. And we were like, maybe it's this and maybe it's that, but the answer is two. And you should watch the episode to find <laughs> the out. The answer is definitely two. Because <laughs> don't forget, power and toughness. So many yeah. creatures are just one, two, 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 whatever two, three, it is. Two, yeah, two, four. Three, four, it's two. Four, two. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's two. It's two. It might be three, but it's probably two. It's probably two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as a commander, Talion is sort of interesting because he doesn't really do anything other than drain your opponents and draw you cards he reminds That's me that's enough for some people in this which world. is great uh <laughs> it's just it's just what you want to do yeah it reminds me a little bit of sig river cutthroat oh yeah that's which cool. is a similar like blue black control deck and yeah. i i think that that's something that you can learn from it where it's just going to be this is about draining my opponents and getting integral value and making sure my hand is full it is a control commander. Yeah, control. Very open-ended commander, though, right? Yeah. Just do whatever you want. Blue, black, name two, and then have fun. Draw the weird cards. thing about this that I, like, if, if you are taking somebody's turn or something and you control their Talion, you can cast Talion for, like, 7.5. <laughs> 
Really? It doesn't say integer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right? You like choose, you could pick pi. You could do 2.1111. Yeah. There is a card that does is yeah. has pi on it. And it just would never trigger yeah, and yeah, be a three, yeah. four in Not the air. Right. That's really funny. Anyway, I think that's, I think that's te- technically allowed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah you just choose anyway. a number between one and 10. It could be 1.0000001. Yeah. And it never would trigger. Sucks, Got him. Sucks to be you. Uh, but let's quickly run through some control staples. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of answers. It's going to be a lot of counter spells, a lot of removal spells, but also some value creatures like a uh, Halo Forager, which is the new one. Uh, oh yeah, I love this card. When it enters the battlefield, you can pay X, and when you do, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with mana value X from a graveyard without hey. paying its mana cost. If the spell will be put into the graveyard, exile it instead. Just gives you a little bit of extra value. Yeah, it's got that whole Snapcaster Mage thing going. Your Douthy Voidwalker control deck sounds pretty good. You can everyone knows what Douthy Voidwalker does. Did you know it has Shadow? I think people forget that quite often. Yeah. Otherwise, it, this is just counter spells, right? This is Fierce Guardianship. It's Mana Drain, an offer you can't refuse. Yeah. Uh, but also probably some removal spells, uh, and that's ultimately how the deck wins is by grinding out your opponents. Yep. But I do, I could see this as more of like a life taxing. Yeah, you could build this into an aristocrats build in blue and black. You could even do, just make a sig deck and just convert yeah, it over, right? Because the, whatever. The commander whatever. just sits there and just draws you cards and makes your opponent slowly die. Yeah. And I picked out some other cards that makes your opponent slowly die. It's Blood Chief Ascension. Yeah, this card is pricey these days. It just got reprinted, actually. Yeah, it's, thank goodness. It's in uh, Commander Masters, so yeah. it's um, it's a little cheaper than it's been. Yeah, it's a black for an enchantment at the beginning of each end step. If an opponent lost two or more life this turn, you may put a quest counter on Blood Chief Ascension. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, if Blood Chief Ascension has three or more quest counters on it, they lose two life and you gain two life. So this just adds on to the awfulness of what your commander is doing and just kills them even faster. Rug of Smothering is a card I really like from Baldur's Gate. Surprise, surprise. It's a three mana <laughs> construct. with one, It's a one three and it flies. It says whenever a player, player casts a spell, they lose one life for each spell they've cast this turn. Ooh. So this is this is a, against your Pyro Hammers. Pyro Hammers, Where they're yeah. trying to cast a whole bunch of spells in one turn. It's like you're going to pay one life for the first one, two life for the second one, mm-hmm. three life for the third one. And if you do something with two in it, also two life there. You're just you're dying just to a rug. You're slowly rugging them to death. Smothered. Yeah. Uh, painful quandary, three black black. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, they lose five life unless they discard a card. Gonna so make them that think would, twice about casting that spell. <laughs> that will kill people. Yeah, very quickly. Wound reflection, Archfiend of Despair. Very similar cards. Uh, they basically just double up whatever the amount of life they've lost that turn at the beginning of each end step. So they've cast three spells that had two in it. They lost six life. Guess what? They're losing another six at the end step. Yeah. So it's going to be a grindy sort of squeezy deck unless... You do this build, which I've seen a couple people do, which is hilarious. It's clones. Oh. You just make a ton More of talents. Italians. And then like, choose different numbers. This one's three. This one's probably, you probably just pick All two again. two, yeah, pick like, two. Like, honestly, two's the best number. You probably do two and then three and then two again <laughs> and then three and then two. So the more Italians you have, the more life they lose, the more cards. So you're going to need cards that get around the legend rule or you're yes. playing a mirror box or whatever. So you got mm-hmm. Helm of the Host, you have Arenicus's Vile Duplication, both the Sakashimas, and then Spark Devil. Yep. It's pretty sweet. Or you play all the other clones and you include the artifacts that let you have more than one legendary creature out. They allow yeah. you to ignore the legend rule. Mirror box. Or yeah. Or mirror gallery. Yep. I think it's mirror gallery. You're right. I think so. So what do you think about this commander? I don't think we'll see it a lot in the command zone. I think we will see a lot of it in the 99. Yeah, totally. Um, I could see this as like, hey, I want to build, I've, I love blue and black. I just want a commander that mm-hmm. doesn't throw me into fairies or whatever. Yeah. And you can just use this commander instead and choose two and you'll have a good time. Yeah, I I think we'll see a, a fair amount of Talion. I have seen CDH brews of Talion start coming up because it's just a oh, good, right. valuable Do they choose flying. like one or zero at that point? Or is in it still CDH, two? In CDH, it's probably one or two. Yeah. I two still really strong. I I know with the little human where you pick a number, yeah, and you they can't cast spells of a certain number. The number's two, yeah, because that's that gets your thassas Everything. and your oh, demonic right, consults right. And, yeah. and all of that. I'm like, I it think gets demonic the signets. Consults. It's like no, Jimmy, those don't matter in CEDH no. as much as you think. Yeah, uh, it gets dockside, but you know, it's probably two. 
probably too. Watch the video. It's very interesting. Yeah. We, we really broke into some EDHREX stats. Okay, cool. The next one is also blue and black, but this time it is the fairy's deck. <laughs> it's Tegwell, Duke of Splendor. This is the box commander on the fairy's deck uh, yeah. that Josh and I just previewed. One blue black for a 2-3 flying death touch. Other fairies you control get plus one, plus one. And whenever another fairy you control dies, you draw a card and you lose one life. Careful. That is not a May ability. Yeah, so they... Careful how many fairies you have. <laughs> yeah, and it's not non-token either. So yeah. your Bitter Blossoms and the, some of the cards we'll talk about here in just a second will hurt you quite a bit. Yeah, so... The but more, you also draw a ton of cards. You're so also you're drawing a ton of cards. So yeah, play children. <laughs> do, you know, draw all the cards. Great. Good. Uh, but also make sure that you haven't overcommitted uh, where a board wipe will kill you. Will kill you, yeah, yeah. But there's uh, probably some life gain you can put in there again. Again, Children of the Apocalypse will get you there. For sure. I also think this deck is probably an aristocratic fairy deck. Um, so you can negate the loss of life. Yeah, so you have all of the drain and gain stuff, but we'll talk about that in a second. First, we have to talk about some fairies. Yay! Lots of really interesting, fun fairy cards here. Notorious Throng is just a card that comes up a bunch because mm -hmm. it has a prowl cost that if you do it, you take an extra turn. But it's yeah. just three and a blue. Create X-1-1 one, one black fairy creature, rogue creature tokens with flying where X is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. So you swing for two, cast this, you make two. Yeah. If you, however, swing and hit them for a bunch, you make a bunch. Yeah. Or if you, like, it, it is damage, but if you deal a bunch of damage to them in, in non-combat damage, you will make a ton of fairies. Yeah. Uh, Notorious Song doesn't care what kind of damage you are doing. And Tegwell is a lord, so they'll make your fairies even bigger, so you can do more damage and make more fairies. Yeah. Bitter Blossom, great way to make fairies. It also makes fairy rogues, rogues. which will trigger your uh, the prowl ability on Notorious Throng. Yeah. Uh, I really like Stolen by the Fae. Oh, I love this card. Uh, X blue blue for a sorcery. Return target creature with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X blue fairy creature tokens with flying. Yeah. It's pretty so sweet. you answer a problem and make a lot of flying tokens. Really, really strong. I think I play that in my Magnus the Red deck. It's very good. It's sweet. Um, the background, Feywild Visitor, commander creatures you own have whenever one or more non-token creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy dragon creature token with flying. Fairy dragons. Still a fairy. Still a fairy. Still a fairy. Still counts. Very good. Uh, makes tokens. I think this one's kind of clever in this deck. It's Cloud Cedar. It's one in a blue for a fairy spell shaper. So one one with flying. It has an activated ability that says blue tap discard a card create a one one blue fairy creature token named Cloud Sprite. It has flying and it can only block creatures with flying. So when it when that token dies, then you'll draw another card. So the discard is more like looting, but yeah. it makes you even more tokens to draw even more cards. Yeah. Spell Setter Sprite. It's just a classic. Um, common from modern masters is kind of fun uh i never got to play the fairies deck in modern masters the original draft this I fairies deck i will say is extremely spicy yeah. um between this and alayla which both are very powerful commanders we're going to talk more about alayla in the budget upgrade yeah um but making, it's a new alayla not the old one by the yes way. um very making good. tokens in this deck i think are particularly good because you can throw them away to get uh cards and it makes spells that are start sprite even better yeah so it counters a spell uh with mana value x or less with x is the number of fairies you control so you can probably at towards end game or even mid game counter most everything by flashing this out for one in the blue and you or get another fairy it. or blinking it yeah very good uh una queen of the fae makes a lot of fairies the fairy commander of old is of course is una um and that will turn all of those fairies into even more card draw yeah you could actually just kill them too sometimes with una yeah these are all in the fairy pre-con i just so i don't want to spend too much time talking about them but fairy formation una queen of the fae brazen borrower halo forager puppeteer click rankle master of pranks obira dreaming duelist is a new one we should read that one because yeah. it is spicy blue black flash flying fairy warrior that's a two two whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under your control each opponent loses one life hey that is kind of we talked about a little bit of aristocrats nature huh once we're making all of those tokens we can really put them to work here yeah again if you're doing a deck that cares about fairies you probably want a kindred discovery and oh, you yeah. probably want the new uh card from lord of the rings which is raise the palisade yeah it's the bounce spell but you pick fairies you keep all your fairies and bounce all their stuff that seems good that seems pretty good Whee! one side of board wipes always very good especially when you have an army again this is how you're winning right you're making 21 ones that are now two twos you're mm -hmm. just gonna be able to start killing people yep yeah people just don't have flying blockers they just don't <laughs> they still don't yeah i mean i still don't and i play yeah. a bunch of dragons 
Dragon's deck still, it's like sometimes you're just like, dang, wow, that 3-1 just hit it's me for 15 this game. Really doing a lot of damage, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, so obviously your commander cares when they die. So if you do go the Aristocrats route, I mean, I think you're playing a Sack Outlet regardless. Yeah. Because it just means you get to draw cards at instant speed, as mm -hmm. well as maybe turn the fairies into something else like mana. So in the Aristocrats build or just in the general build, you're going to have your Ashnod's Altar. You're probably playing Viscera Seer, Ultra of Dementia, and Skull Clamp is sneakily not as good because when your commander's out, it makes them plus one, plus one, so your fairies true. can't get die to it. That's but true. without your commander out, you're going to have all these other cards that still make fairies. Hey, you still have a sack outlet. You Someone, can still I mean, clamp and sack and clamp and sack. Yeah, exactly. You could clamp sack. There's a lot of different things you can do. Um, yeah, that's a good but yeah, you want to draw a bunch of cards anyway. And I feel like your commander's going to die. And people, once this is out... He's also like, flying and death touch. Like, he is yeah, a problem. Yeah. So, and, and is drawing you a ton of cards. So, yeah. you, <laughs> you got you you to make sure that you have an that. answer for uh, that commander. And of course, you want to counter that, all of that life loss so you don't die to your own greed. Blood Artist, Zulaport, Cutthroat, Bastion of Remembrance will all drain when one of your fairy dies. So they'll yep. all lose one and you gain one. Or you could go Ayara, First of Lockthwain, another Eldrain card, Flavor. Oh, yeah, that's fun. But Ayara also says whenever another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, a lot of blue fairies, but most fairy tokens are, are black. black. So uh, Ayara will drain and get you some of that life back Very cool. as well. It's a cool deck. It's I think probably this, the best fairy commander that's been printed in a long, long time, I it's, think. I mean, other than like combos and stuff with Una, yes. Yeah, well, I mean, Una, you're not playing for the fairy side. Right, it's you're not playing really fairy. because you're, you're making infinite mana thing. and yeah. killing someone, yeah. yeah. In this case, I think this and, of course, the new Alayla are both in contention, I think, for just the best fairy commanders of all time. Maybe Alayla, Artful Provocateur, the original. Yeah, but even that's like an artifact combo deck. Yeah, exactly. So, or I mean, let us know in the comments if okay. you disagree but it's Eldrain. it would make sense that the most powerful fairies are here mm -hmm. and uh, they are here indeed and they in the precon trixie yeah this is all from the precon that we got to reveal and uh it's great this cool. next one is an aristocrat deck as well but i wanted to talk about it because it's an uncommon and i think it's sneaky really powerful yeah and the name is really fun isn't too. it it's totentons <laughs> swarm piper it's uh yeah one, the black and a red. Two, three, human warlock bard, because it's a piper. Mm -hmm. Whenever Totentons <laughs> or another non-token creature you control dies, you create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block. And then you can pay one in the black to make target attacking rat you control gain death touch until end of turn. Yeah, they made Ogre Slumlord a legend for two mana less, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, because Ogre Slumber's <laughs> a five mana card and makes those little rats with Death Touch already. Yeah, so it's it's like a red-black Ogre Slumlordy effect. Um, and we haven't actually seen a Rakdos um, legend that m does this kind of thing. Like when when something dies, you make more things. Yeah, Rakdos specifically, right? Right. And it's, it's really, really powerful when you're building Aristocrats because it's like everything dies twice, basically. Yeah. And I think you could definitely make this a rat deck, which we're going to talk about in a second. But I also think you could just go with a, like sacking skeletons, bring skeletons back right. and, and make this huge board of tokens that you sack in one big It's the turn. rats and bats deck. Rats and bats. Yeah, this is for sure a Mirkwood bats deck. Let's talk about this Aristocrat build. Yeah, Mirkwood Bats, by the way, new card from Lord of the Rings, uh, three in a black. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. So this includes treasures, foods, as well as your little rats that come around from Totentons. Nadir's Nightblade does a similar thing. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Yeah, very good. Uh, so it's gaining life off of those rats. This is a new one that I don't know how good it is, but it's sweet and I wanted the to talk about sweet. it. The sweet. Right? Yeah. Twisted Sewer Witch, three black, black for a three, four warlock human. When Twisted Sewer Witch enters the battlefield, you create a one, one black rat creature token with this creature can't block, just like Totentons. And then for each rat you control, create a wicked roll token attached to that creature so that gives it plus one plus one and then when the aura is put into the graveyard each opponent loses one life yeah so now all of your rats have an additional drain effect on them mm -hmm. plus they give you an additional aura that enters the battlefield for your mirkwood bats or an additional drain trigger on your nadir's nightblade yeah it's kind of cool 
It's a cool combo. Five mana is a lot, and you do have to have a lot of rats already, but its name is Twisted Sewer Witch. Yeah, you could also just play a bunch of Relentless Rats in this deck, and when they die, you make the little rat tokens, yeah, right? So there's a lot back. of rats you can put into this deck. Yeah, I think if, we're, if you're just doing the straightforward sack build, uh, you you could put Garn of Blood, Flist, Blood Fist of Keld, excuse me. A lot of blood in Garn's life. Yeah, Blood Fist of Keld. <laughs> blood Flame Blood Blarna. One black, red, red for a human berserker. It's whenever another creature you control dies draw a card if it was attacking otherwise garna deals one damage to each opponent so with a sack outlet you can do a bunch of damage to your opponents but these also can't block so there's nothing against you just sending, sending all of the rats out. yeah well also your commander they, makes them have death touch uh yeah you could so they're annoying to block and uh, they will force some damage through yeah if you're sacking stuff as well mayhem devil is just the thing that will take someone down from like i've seen it take someone from like 20 to zero in a single turn because it's whenever any player sacrifices a permanent and mayhem devil deals one damage to any target yep so it makes have, those treasures a lot worse too yeah and you've combined that with merc with bats right you're just ooh, murdering everyone at that point yep of course, you are going to need some non-token creatures to die, and the best way to do that is non-token creatures that bring themselves back. Yay! Reassembling Skeleton. Uh, you pay one in a black to return it from Graver to the Battlefield tapped, but it's just a creature. That's a 1-1, one, one, and it dies a bunch. Loves dying. Bloodgast is one of my favorites. It's whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Bloodgast from your graveyard to the battlefield. If you sack Bloodgast, make, make a rat. Play a land, get Bloodgast back, sack him, make a rat. Crack the land. Crack the fetch <laughs> land. Yeah, <laughs> get another blood gas. Make a little rat. He's really, really good. Uh, Cauldron Familiar, for those of you familiar with the Witches Oven Cauldron Familiar cat deck. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a black cat when it enters the battlefield. Each opponent lose one life and you gain one life and you can sack a food to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, so. that's got to be combined with the oven to make maximum effort, but there is a lot of food making stuff in this set generally, especially yeah. if you want to stay on flavor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Skyclave Shade, Nether Trader, all of these are like creatures that bring themselves back to the battlefield without spending a ton of resources just to make sure that you're getting maximum sack triggers and maximum rats. Rats, 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 rats. Uh, you could put Anax hardened in the forge there because let's say uh, you have the relentless rats or whatever they're really big every time they die you make a bunch of little one one red satyr creature tokens yeah one for every creature two if it's a big one uh yeah. so it does the same thing as your commander is when a creature dies gives you more tokens yeah if you have this and your commander out you're making two tokens every single time something every single time something dies pretty yeah, sweet three. obviously if you're building it that way you fill the deck with sack outlets as well yeah oh yeah we this, already talked about sack you need outlets. a lot of sack outlets in put sack deck, outlets sure. in that arista rat deck arista rats arista rats oh, radocrats Radocrats. Radocrats. Nah, I think see, Aristoc Wait, Aristocrats. But then there's too yeah, much Yeah, but then it just the sounds... Seat. Yeah, that, it's Aristocrats. 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 Aristic rats. It's Aristocrats. Uh, <laughs> Aristocrats. I think you build this... You could build this as a pretty cool rat token deck as well. Uh, and you get some red and black cards in the same place. We've seen a lot of mono black rat commanders. Yeah. Uh, and this, this one, the one combines them. Yeah. So you get some cool new cards from Eldraine that make those camp block rats. The Song of Dotenton. Gotta He's play a bard. song. Uh, X and a red sorcery create X11 one, one black rat creature tokens with this creature camp block. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. That's a ton of power. Yeah. That could be with this haste? Is like a game ender. Yeah. And you're playing the. Do, 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 do. Hey, you got that a song with Tilton Tens. Is that the song? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Come on. I mean, I'm reading the notes on the page here, and it looks like that's what no, the song is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, red Cap Gutter Dweller is another one. It's a two red red for a goblin warrior with menace. It's a 3-3. Three, three. It says, whenever Red Cap Gutter Dweller enters the battlefield, you make two rats. And then what? at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, put a counter on Red Cap Gutter Dweller and exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Little card nice. draw, little rats. Rats are the new goblins. They're pretty sweet. Like Chittering Witch makes oh, a Oh, Chittering Witch is real on. good. That, I have played put this card in so many decks. Yeah, when there is a battlefield, you just create a 1-1 one, one rat equal to the number of opponents you have. So this could be a four mana with a 2-2 two, two, and then three rats. Yeah, and then it has a sack outlet that allows you to sack a creature and give something minus two, minus two. You could sack it. It could die, make another rat, reanimate it, come back, make Ooh. more rats. This sort of like Arista rat deck is super, super sweet, yeah, in my opinion. Sweet. You get to do cool things like Marrow Gnar. Oh, yeah. This will just Classic. give all your rats fear, so they're basically unblockable. Uh, you can tap sack a rat, put X11 black rat creature tokens into play, where X is the number of rats you control. It's a rat doubler. 
Yeah, I'm telling you, rats are the new goblin. <laughs> rats are sweet. Rats are sweet. Uh, plus, it got a lot of cool legends that you could put in the deck. Uh, recently, Ashcoat of the Shadow Swarm is an alternate win con type of thing because it's a three and a black for a rat warlock. Whenever Ashcoat attacks or blocks, other rats you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of rats you control. Whoa. At the beginning of your end step, you may mill four cards. If you do, return up to... <laughs> Two rat creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, so you're sacking them. You're getting them back. Ashcoat seems like one of the best cards in the deck, just straight up. It buffs all of your rats, and you're going to have a lot of them. Yeah, I like that. Wait, this you, one, you this one's the, busted. Yeah, yeah. Karumonix the Rat King. This is just the rat deck. Yeah. This is a Phyrexian rat. One black, black, three, three with Toxic One. Other rats you control have Toxic One. So you combine this with the doo-doo song of Tilton Tons. Uh, no, they all have Toxic Ashkin. One? Yeah. yeah. When Karamonix enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal any number of rat cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand and then the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I mean, with the amount of rats you have, just the, just giving them Toxic One is like, now I have to block them and you can give certain ones Death Touch. Yeah. That is so tough. Well, you get that Piper of the Swarm out. Rats you control have Menace and you can tap to create black rat creature tokens or you can sack rats to gain control of target creature. Three oh, rats yeah. and four mana seems good you didn't mention this card just because the name is amazing it is a goblin but it's it, mad it ratter <laughs> yay they were having fun <laughs> this is from original eldraine right yeah and it's whenever you draw your second card each turn create two black rats wow that's a lot of rats very cool that's a mad amount of rats yeah oh you all, we also have to talk about plague of vermin i love this card and six it's also the, pretty good in rowan yeah 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 yeah. because you get to pay life so six in the black starting with you each player may pay any amount of life and then you repeat this process until no one pays life each player puts a one one black rat creature token into play for each one life he or she paid this way cool make a ton of rats pay 20 life make 20 rats piper of the swarm give them menace this one's really... give them toxic you win the game Really, really good with Ayara, um, yeah. too, because Ayara says ETB, you gain all that life oh, right back. Oh, yeah. Fun, fun. There are also some rats that bring themselves back to the battlefield, and I think if you're going more rat-focused, you play both Rotting Rats and Wave of Rats. Uh, one of them has Unearth, and the other one, when it dies, if it dealt combat damage this turn, it brings itself back. So it just gives you a non-token rat to kill and bring back and kill and bring back. Why didn't they make a rat precon? You know, fairies or it's whatever. It's pretty sweet. I mean, I think like they did a lot of rat focus in the main set. So yeah. I think there is enough to build a really cool Rakdos rats deck. And rat rat dose we've gotten some cool <laughs> rat commanders that we haven't talked about on the podcast so i wanted to make sure that we got to talk about yeah you played how nashi cool nashi's a rat rats right? are, now she's a rat and now she's awesome yeah uh, I, I also wanted to mention species specialist is really really good in this deck uh when it enters you choose a creature type rat whenever a creature of the chosen type dies you may draw a card including tokens yeah so that's very good there seems great Combine that with a mad ratter you are just comboing cruising. off you are cruising for a none of the other commanders can even compare to the power level of this rat deck. Totentons, Swarm Piper, best like card him. in the set, maybe. I don't know. He's one of the top nine. <laughs> 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 it's cool though i think i've seen a lot of people put rat decks together just for whatever even posty has like a rat deck people really like rats and yeah. we just have it we've had a lot of mono black commanders and this one finally gets mad ratter in the mix yeah there. yeah 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 <laughs> and who doesn't love ogre slumlord the commander i like ogre slumlord all right this next one goes with his sister it's will a scion of peace where rowan was just blowing stuff up will is uh, a little more peaceful he's going the other way with he's dealing with his parents death in a slightly different way Indeed. he's he's going he's leaning into leadership he's yeah. really ruling the country he's also he's blue a white, lot of life so it makes sense <laughs> yeah. yeah okay so this is white one blue and a white for a two four with vigilance you can tap will just like you can tap rowan uh spells you cast this turn that are white and or blue cost x less to cast whoa just like rowan but where x is the amount of life you gained this turn activate only as a sorcery so okay. not as good obviously because gaining life is much more difficult to do than paying life there's no card in magic that says pay gain one pay life do something life, yeah, yeah yeah no it's it wouldn't be good he's not as good as his sister as necropotence uh, or whatever but so it's a it's a blue white life gain deck yeah for sure and you look at it and you're like okay it's a life gain deck i'm gonna put all the life gain cards in it i'm gonna put soul sisters in it i'm gonna put whenever i gain life i put counters on all my stuff i don't think it's that deck mm -hmm. i don't think it's a soul sister deck because you want them to gain life on your turn mm -hmm. and if you do that then you also have to make the creatures in addition to gaining the life so it muddles 
everything. What I think this deck is, is I think it's a revitalized deck. Ooh. What does revitalized do, Rachel? It's a two mana instant for one and a white that says you gain three life, draw a card. Well, just like that's like just like the best card in Magic: The Gathering. Pretty good. You gain life and draw a card. Whoa! But now, think picture revitalize if it says your spells cost three less to cast. Yeah, that's very good. So he's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so now you spent two mana. All of your spells cost three less, and you have a new card in hand. Mm-hmm. I think that's how this deck is. And there's a lot of revitalizes to uh, revitalizes the only two mana one. Um, one of the best ones is Union of the Third Path. Yeah, this one's pretty crazy. It's an I instant think too, so. which is yeah. awesome. Two and a white instant draw card, then you gain life equal to the number of cards in your hand. You could gain seven. Yep. And later on in the game, you're in blue white. You could gain like twenty. And like, how much less <laughs> do you need your spells to cast? You know? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah exactly. There's a lot of draw spells that are combined with life gain. This is what they like to do in blue white. Faithful mending says you gain two life, draw two cards, then discard two cards. It also has flashback. Uh, so you could gain up to four life and you could draw two two cards and discard two. Yep. Spoils of Adventure uh, costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. And Will's a wizard, so Will's that's a wizard. already down so- one. You gain three life, draw three cards. I like this one in particular because it, once all of your spells are reduced, yep. you can really start churning through your deck and it's only totally. going to cost white blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to go big, you go beacon of immortality, baby. Yeah. So doubling life is amount of life you've gained this turn. Yes. Yes. So if you double your life total and your life total is just a meager 40. Now your spells cost 40 less to cast. <laughs> and then you cast Torment of Hailfire. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, we got to figure out something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a great approach of the second sun deck. Yeah. Because. Uh, you can cause one white man to do it. And then every other card you have in the deck is drawing you cards. So you yeah. just get right back to it. Yep. Yeah, very approach good. Approach of the second sun also gains you seven life. Did you remember that about Approach I of the second did sun? did not remember that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it doesn't matter in EDH, but now it does. Yeah. You can also just cast this for one man, man. Casting this for one, and then you're just drawing, popping off, drawing, 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 drawing. So yeah. Cast it for one again, just win. <laughs> you cast this, you gain seven. All of your next, your spells cost seven less to cast. Yeah. So you're like, all right, I'll play uh, Blue Sun Zenith, where it's <laughs> seven. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. I'm back at Approaching we the Second Sun. Yeah. did it. All of the incidental gain life spells um, that seem a little overcosted are suddenly great Way, in this deck. Yeah, they're amazing. So uh, Sanctify is one in the white. Destroy Artifact or Enchantment and you gain three life. Very mm-hmm. good. Uh, there's a couple of these. Invoke the Divine does a similar thing as does Solemn Offering. Yeah. One of the coolest ways to gain life, I think, is a is a card that keeps going up and up in my book. It's Search for Glory. Two and a white for a Very snow good. sorcery. Search your library for a snow permanent card, a legendary card, or a saga card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. You gain one life for each snow spent to cast this spell. So you gain three life. You can also tutor for a legendary in your deck yeah which could be any number of things including or a saga or a saga yeah or another basic land if you need to oh that's a good point yeah it's a, you can do a, a snow permanent so you can just use this to find the land yeah um, yeah i really like search for glory yeah i think it finds a lot of just sort of incidental pieces yeah in decks in general and it will gain you a little bit of life man this deck is so annoying to play against already and i haven't even played against it because yep. it's just gaining so much life yep uh, Vencer's Journal, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life for each card in your hand. Oh, rough. Uh, ivory Tower. Tower. One yeah. mana artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life for X to the number of cards in your hand minus four. So at least three if you're just constantly keeping it full. Yeah. Um, even lands, right? Like gain lands. Uh, Radiant Fountain is really good. Just mm-hmm. comes in. Untapped. Spells cost two less to cast. Just immediately like, you play yeah. a land. Pretty sick. Kabir Crossroads is the same thing, but it enters tapped. Uh, I think you even play the bounce land to like return these to your hand so yeah. you can play them again next turn. Yeah, totally. Um, some big life... I, I don't normally like Boon Reflection. <laughs> the card sucks normally. It's really bad. But if you would gain life, you gain twice that much life instead. Right. Is so if in in a spell that it's like four and a white, so it could be reduced down to white. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. cast. I think it, like nobody wants to remove a boon reflection. Yeah, and no one also wants to play boon reflection for five mana. Yeah. So if you can reduce it, play it, and I think because you're blue white, they're not looking at you in the same way they did with Rowan. Right. Where they're like, oh, we're gonna die. They're like, oh, they're just gaining a bunch of life. We'll and figure that out later. Blue and white. Ugh, whatever. I'm not killing a boon reflection. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's a bull as a citadel over there. There's a freaking great henge. I don't care about boon reflection. So you could kill people with Aetherflux Reservoir. That then they care. Then, yeah. then, then they, they care. really care. But I think there are cooler ways to kill the your opponents. Um, I did mention that I don't think untapping is super good in, in Rowan. Rowan. Because you can just pay X life with so many different cards and not yeah, have to untap Rowan. And you just don't need X to be as big. But I do think untapping will is a big deal. Right. That would make that makes sense. Because you can cast like if you gain three life and you tap him and now all your spells cost three less and you're now you're playing I draw, I draw, I draw, I draw, I draw, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you've gained a bunch of life, now you can untap Will and all of your stuff costs that, that much, much less. less. Yeah. That seems really, really powerful in this deck. Yeah. So I do think that you want some untappers. Starting with this first one, which I think was a really fun find. Yeah, Teferi who slows the sunset. Did you know there was another Teferi that popped up in Midnight Hunt? Yeah. Now you do. This one's two in white and the blue, and the most important one is the plus one. So choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. Untap the chosen permanence, and then tap the chosen permanence you don't control, and you gain two life. So you gain life. You and untap you Will. You untap him. You oh tap one of their things down. You could also you untap, untap your, your Thousand Year Elixir. Whoa. And then do it once more with yeah. Will. Yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah, pretty sweet. Jimmy, this deck is a little cool. It's a little cool. It's a little cool. It's a white blue deck that isn't just like, I'm going to counterspell you into oblivion yeah. and you hate me. <laughs> yeah, you hate me for a different reason. <laughs> like the reason. first commander we talked about, that was white and blue. Yeah, now you're like, oh God, they're at 80 life and they have all so many cards and they just can do whatever they want. <laughs> 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 I killed Will, but it doesn't matter. Thanks He's coming guessing. back and it has haste. Uh, I think you want Cerulean Wisps, which is just untap target creature and you draw a card. Yeah. Retreat to Coral Helm, play a land, untap Will. Oh, yeah. Freed from the real. Go nuts. That is like how you win the game, I feel yeah. like. Untap, tap Will again. There's so many also infinite combos with Freed from the real that you could just find a way to make infinite mana very quickly with this deck if you want to go that route. Oh, for sure. And now, how do you win the game? You cast Blue Sun Zenith over and over again and make everyone draw their <laughs> deck out. Yeah. That's definitely a way to do it. Sweet. Uh, Drown in Dreams is the X version of a mill card, so you can make target player mill twice X cards. It's X two in the blue. Yeah, and so you that's another choose two con. if you have your commander. So you could draw like I'm going to draw ten cards, but you're going to mill twenty. Right. But it's probably going to be like I'm going to draw thirty cards and you're going to mill sixty. Yeah. It's closer to what you want. In or this you have deck. you've already drawn so many cards, you just mill someone for sixty instead. Yeah. Uh, blue Sun Zenith, by the way, is very good because it shuffles into its owner's library after it's done, so you can just draw it again and do it again. I really liked this one in this deck, and I didn't oh, like it when it came out, right? In. A finale, it's finale of Revelation. I've tried to play this card in so many decks. It's <laughs> actually good here, I think. It's yeah. blue, blue, X, draw X cards. If X is 10 or more, instead, shuffle your graveyard into your library, draw X cards, untap up to five lands, huge. Yeah. And you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Yeah, Exile finale of huge. Revelation. Like we said with the Rowan deck, if you don't have the color, like for instance, like Blue Sun Zenith costs three blue pips, you need to have colored lands to be able to do that. Right. And so being in the untapped lands of finale of Revelation is super sick. Same with like Peregrine Drakes and stuff. I think you're probably running in decks like this. Probably. Just play one blue, blue. Yeah. And you untap, you're gaining mana now. And then you can just continue the yeah. chain. Yeah. Frantic searches, untap your land. Oh, yeah. It's going to be mana positive in this yeah. deck. Even like rewinds and stuff. Just oh, yeah. like, because if you want to protect the turn you're going off and then you want tap lands on top of it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of blue-white X spells that you could win the game in different ways. Heliod's Intervention is going to be great because it can gain you a ton of life, but it can also blow up a ton of ar ar artifacts yeah. and enchantments. Not going to win you the game, but mass manipulation sure will. X, X, blue, 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 blue. Blue, 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 blue. Four blues. Blue, 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 blue. Gain control of X target creatures and or planeswalkers. That's a lot. You're not taking control of any Clans Walkers most of the time. <laughs> yeah, but you are like, stealing that, the whole give me board. That, give me that. And it's full control, that. by the way. You're so there, you, yours. You could play, probably play an Agent of Treachery as well. There's different ways you could take the deck. You could go, I want to do the blink white blue thing, Agent of Treachery, and mm -hmm. then, you know, teleportation circle or whatever. Because Rowan, again, it's just blue and white spells. Yep. It's so good. Not permanence, not instant sorceries. So very good. You've never cast a better Sphinx's Revelation in your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, Whites and Swilight, that's a win con. You make a bunch sure. of uh, X11 one, one mites with Toxic 1, and then you also blow up all other creatures if, if X is 5 or greater. And you're like, okay, I have 38 mites. <laughs> Find a blocker. <laughs> yeah, and you don't care that Rowan's gone anymore at that point. Yeah. You just go nuts. Yeah, I, I think this deck is actually pretty sweet. It's, um, it's going to be tricky to play, and it might be worse in like then it feels when you're listing all of yeah, these cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but 
it plays a bunch of cool cards and uh in a new and different way i like I've, I've said this so many times about blue white though they're always struggling to find a way to make a deck that isn't just control yeah and rowan and will oh not rowan rowan is just like yeah rowan but will is finally like oh i can just cast huge spells like spell redu- same with actually the new heliod as well it just yeah. like shows you new ways to do stuff that you normally wouldn't with blue and white because it just so very often gets into the just the counter spell removal control blue white ball yeah so um, thank you wizards for doing something about that i like it yeah Hold maybe on. maybe that'll be the first blue white deck i ever build yeah well i built Go one ahead. on game nights and i hated it it was azorius uh Lav- with the, the, the lavinia the renegade the one that counters your mana crypts and stuff yeah well that sounds awful <laughs> yeah it was and i was like what am i doing with this deck why did i choose this commander this is yawn fest <laughs> i think i won that game though so maybe not so much well, this. maybe i should play more is good. Blue. shoot just ask josh like why okay yeah i think will will's pretty sweet uh, this last one is another green white enchantress deck, but it is very different from Gilwain. Yeah, and it has one of my favorite words in it, but it's not of those colors. It's Yenna, Red Tooth Regent. Two a green and a white for a 4 4 elf noble. You can pay two mana and tap Yenna. Choose target enchantment you control that doesn't have the same name as another permanent you control. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary. If the token is an aura, untap Yenna. <laughs> Red Tooth Regent, then scry two. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, was there enough text there? Let's do it again. <laughs> two in the mana, t- two mana to tap it. Choose an enchantment you control that doesn't have the same name as another permanent you control. Just so, something you haven't copied before. Yeah, you haven't already copied before, basically. Uh, and then if it, uh, you create a token of it, except it's not legendary. Very cool. And then if the token is an aura, you untap Yenna, so then you could do it again, and then you scry two. Seems good. Yeah, it seems really good. Starting with? Anointed Procession. <laughs> Gosh, darn it. Look at this thing go. Parallel Lives, doubling season. <laughs> So pretty good. <laughs> okay, yeah. If you make a copy of Anointed Procession, you have an Anointed Procession. You make a copy of it. You make two copies, you make actually. Two copies. That's yeah. Anointed Procession. Of a, of two anoint- tokens. Of Anointed Procession. Yeah. Because of Yenna. So now, the next time you make a copy of something, you're going to make four copies of wow. it. Actually, that's not quite correct. Hi, I'm Murph. And if you have an anointed procession, it'll make two copies of something, but that is a replacement effect. So if you have two anointed processions, it'll instead make four copies. And if you have three anointed processions, it'll instead make eight. So now you know, that's how multiple replacement effects work. Oh yeah, you have so many anointed processions just hanging around. Yeah, and you can't copy your anointed procession, but you could copy your smothering time. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, that's brutal if you do that. It seems pretty powerful. Slow. uh, Slower than most Enchantress decks, but... Yeah, you have to tap Yenna, obviously, and Yenna needs to have haste if you want to do it on the turn she is cast. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, you can copy Parallel Lives. I mean, finally, a reason to play Doubling Season. (laughs) Uh, Which has also been reprinted in the set in the bonus sheet, by the way, so very cool there. Uh, If you want to keep copying your enchantments, which I'm sure you do, you probably play the new card, Undo Spirit Dancer. This is in the Commander Masters Precons. It's four and a white for a core cleric. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a token that's a copy of it. Whoa! Do it only once each turn. Yeah, Undo Spirit Dancer is kind of like Yenna in the 99, so you're already duplicating this effect, and you're probably going to want to have as much of that as possible because Yenna is like remove on site type level of oh gosh because a lot of decks just have problems dealing with enchantments Mm -hmm. unless they have a wipe all enchantment thing which many decks do not have so just creating one more of an enchantment you have is like I'm done I can't do anything I was trying I was going to remove one but I cannot remove three at this point I, one of the best things that you can copy early is a privileged position is it says other permanents you control have hexproof which gives privileged position hexproof so now everything see each other yeah that's pretty good a big nonbo in this deck that isn't often nonbos in enchantress deck is sterling grove yeah you really 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 want to be able to target your other enchantments and sterling grove gives them shroud yeah there's a lot of really really powerful uh enchantments that you can copy ghostly prison having two is like oh uh, my gosh yeah you're never getting attacked two felidar retreats is outrageous oh now you make two cats or you put four or you make a cat and counters yeah 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 really absurd mirari's wake doubling your mana now you're doubling it again Again, or you're not doubling it, you're adding, you're tripling it kind of at that point. Even Sithis Harvest Hand, uh, which says whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and draw a card. Oh, yeah. Is a legendary enchantment, uh, but you make a token copy that isn't legendary. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so you could go that direction. 
Uh, I did want to mention this because it is confusing and we had to look up a lot of rules. Uh, you can <laughs> use Yenna to copy growing rights of Itlamok. Okay. Which is two and a green for a legendary enchantment. Uh, when growing rights enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them, put them into your hand, put them on the bottom of your library in any order. At the beginning of your end step, if you control four or more creatures, transform growing rights of Itlamok. It becomes Gaia's Cradle, but also just randomly taps for green. Yeah. Very good. So it's worth noting that the rules for tokens changed when they made incubate tokens. Previously, tokens didn't have a backside. They were incapable of transforming. But when incubate tokens were created, now token copies of things have the sides of the card that it's copied. Yeah, so let's read the rule. It's 707.8a. If an effect creates a token that is a copy of a transforming permanent, like Drawing Rights of Itlamok, or a transforming double-faced card not on the battlefield, the resulting token is a transforming token that has both a front and back face the characteristics of each face are determined by the copyable values of the same face of the permanent it is a copy of as modified by another copy effects that apply to that permanent so that cool. last that last line is really important because yana makes a non-legendary token right so it changes it actually. so it changes the whole token which means growing rise of itlamok the the token that you make is not legendary but also itlamok cradle of the sun is also not legendary so now you can have multiple itlamoks on the battlefield whoa which is weird because now like both sides it affects both sides yeah that is know. very we weird. looked up a lot of rules and it works yeah, so Yenna has this really fun ability that allows her to untap and then scry to if it's copying an aura. So let's talk about some auras you might want to do. You might be thinking, oh, this is like for the creature auras, the rolls and all that stuff. Or it could be for land auras. Yep. Wild Growth, Utopia Sprawl, very good uh, to copy those. So you just get even more sweet enchant lands that tap for a bunch of mana. I think it's pretty funny to copy this one, so I want to mention it. Yeah. It's a very dumb old card called Wellspring. I think it's kind of sick, actually. It's actually sick. It's one a green and a white for an aura. Uh, it's an enchant land. Aura. When, uh, aura. Uh, when it comes into play, gain control of enchanted land. So at you the target your opponent's land here. And you're like, give me that Nykthos, or give me that Guy's Cradle. I don't or know. Or give me that Plains. I don't care. <laughs> uh, and it says at the end of each of your turns, you lose control of enchanted land. At beginning of each of your turns, gain control of enchanted land. Yeah, so you would get it and then you would untap because obviously yeah. the turn you try and steal the land, they'll tap it in response and you'll gain a tap land. Yeah. But after that, you're basically ramping. You've ramped. Yeah, you're green, green, white ramp. Green had no problems ramping before, but now it can do it with Wellspring. And, uh, and it has a zebra on it. <laughs> it has that's, a lot of animals that's on That's upside. That, I think Wellspring's sweet. And if you make two token copies, you're like, give me your land, yeah, give, me give me your land. land. Yeah. Give me this land. And you need lands, by the way. This mana, this commander is pretty mana. Mana intensive yeah. for sure. Uh, you want to copy Song of the Dryads or Kenrith's Transformation? These are sweet auras to copy because they're also removal spells. Yep. And, and uh, then the land that you create with Song of the Dryads, you can wellspring it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can remove the land. Uh, I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> Camera's Transformation is sweet. It's like repeatable and you untap and you can do it again, right? So you can yep. pay two, tap, copy Camera's Transformation, take out another creature, untap or scry two, pay two mana, do it again. And draw a card off and of that. Do it again. And do it again. Yeah. So it's like really sick there. Yep. Um, obviously, Grasp of Fate, really powerful in removal enchantment as well. But these are my two favorite auras that you can copy because they untap Yenna. Ooh. Uh, I got the oracle text on these because it's yeah, important yeah, yeah. that we have the oracle text. This one has the oracle text. It's Instill Energy, one of the earliest cards ever printed. Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature can attack as though it had haste. So can it use its abilities? No. Ah, uh, unfortunately it cannot however you can pay zero mana to untap enchanted creature and you can only do it during your turn and only once each turn so you pay zero to untap yana but if you have a token copy you can untap her twice oh, with cool. this because you have two different instill energies yeah 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 uh, and nature's chosen does a similar thing uh, that is an aura that says zero untap enchanted creature activate only during your turn and only once each turn and tap enchanted creature untap target artifact creature or land activate only if the enchanted creature is white and untapped and only once each turn yeah sure. kind of it's white uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you can you can tap it to untap other stuff as well but all of those give you more opportunities to untap your commander and make a ton of copies all in one turn yeah, that makes my brain hurt, this commander. It's pretty wild, right? It's one of the weirdest it's pretty wild enchantress. Wild I ah, 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 It's yeah, uh it's it one of the more interesting uh 
enchantment commanders that I've seen in a while. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of what we just talked about with uh, Rowan, or no, Will, uh, Mm -hmm. in that Blue White typically has this thing that they're doing. And this is the weirdest enchantress I've ever seen. But it's so powerful because you can double enchantments. Yeah, and you're still going to run all of the enchantress effects that we talked about in Gilwain. Again, probably you'll have some of the regular enchantresses, but Constellation is better because the more tokens you make, the better. Um, I just think the fact that you can untap this commander if you copy an aura just seems like there we talked about some stuff here but i'm sure all of you out there are already brewing some ideas that we didn't even think about yeah that go nuts with the auras anyway it's a super super cool commander um it's definitely not better than sithis but it is still awesome it's bigger it is it's a two four yeah it's a more it's a like more explosive is what i mean like it's, oh, it's, it's a four it's, four sorry it's less of like a storm enchantress commander and yeah. more of like a now i have 12 anointed processions now <laughs> i have 30 yeah there's a bit win more stuff happening there i think finding a win con is going to be important for this deck as well yeah for sure all, all right. right we have talked about the most powerful commanders in eldraine of course that is according to our esteemed minds it's possible that we miss some we are going to cover more commanders don't worry but before we go i want to talk about our favorite commanders that we talked about today uh mine's very obvious it's got to be imodane the pyro hammer it's just a sweet i mean i play in the heb deck i've built like seven mono red decks in my life imodane it's so explosive if it doesn't just become the new in the because Neheb at this point is it's getting a little tired yeah uh, and everyone knows what's coming they know how it works imodane seems like a way to do that but faster even. it's like Taralf, but like but faster than yeah, Tarolf. Yeah, yeah, Tarolf yeah. was so confusing where you could Blasphemous Act and then be like, okay, I think somebody's yeah. dead. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I have exactly. to do math for the next 40 minutes. Imodane is like, what math? Die, 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 die. die, die, die. die. Yeah, and if I want to have that deck, uh, again, I love Neheb the Eternal, and that, that deck almost one for one translates in a lot of different areas, so I'm just happy to reskin it once again, as I've done with my mono red decks in the past, so thanks for that. Super cool. Uh, my favorite's Gilwain. I It was really, really fun to play on game night, so I hope you guys check that out. Uh, also, it's a super creaturey enchantment deck, which yeah. is exactly how I like to build my decks. Yeah, um, it's an enchantress deck with a win con. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's funny because you get to put hats on different things, and it's like powerful because it's making all these enchantments. Yeah, um, I, I like Gilwain a lot. I think we'll see a lot of him. All right, what about what do you think is the most powerful commander from WoW? Uh, at least from the ten that we talked about today. I already mentioned Imodane is probably one of the most powerful, but outside of that, I, yeah, there's like two or three that yeah. are definitely the top. Right? It's it's Rowan, Rowan it's Imodane, and, and maybe and, even Will, and Daya, and and then but also Talion. Yeah, and maybe even Yenna. Jeez, there's I a mean, lot. So I I think there's a lot of really explosive commanders. I th- I think if we're talking just raw power, Generic power, it's got to be Talion. Yeah, because you can just do any blue black shell, yeah. and you'll just always be drawing cards to make people lose life there. Like that's the most. If I sat down ac- across from any one of those decks, the right. deck I would be most worried about is the Talion deck because, because it just... feels like it's gonna have the most powerful deck. Right. But yeah, if we're yeah. talking about the most like yeah, powerful effect, the Rowan Sign of War deck is like sweet. I'm gonna try and kill everyone. The Talion deck is just like counter spell, counter spell, counter spell. You can't do it. Right. Yeah. Or play my commander instantly, remove it because I'm a blue black control deck. Yeah. And there's just gonna be. It gets to the point where there's nothing that you can do because yeah. it tends to tends to constrict. I'll probably say Rowan is my favorite because that's also a deck I'm thinking about building now, and it feels CEDHE enough. So powerful. For and sure. I just want to sit down across from someone and just blast them. Just blast. Them. Blast that guy. I've got a Rakdos deck. I know what it feels like to be able to... Re- this one's reduced by 35. Can't believe no one said Totenton Swarm Piper, but... Hey, you know, Totentons is a good boy. Do, 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 do. Totentons is a song. To the listeners, which commanders do you think are the most powerful in the set? Did we miss any? Uh-huh. Are you planning on building any of the commanders that we talked about today? Hey. And what are you putting in the deck? Did we miss any of the coolest tech that you found? We want to hear about it in the comments below. Yeah, and if you want to get ahead of that tech before anyone else, you don't even want to post a comment because you don't want other people to see it because you're at cardkingdom.com slash command and you're searching that card up and you decide you wanted the alt art version with the full frame and the cool foil version. Well, guess what? Cardkingdom.com slash command might have it because they have a huge inventory. And not only that, you're going to order all your cards at once. You get it into one single sweet package arriving at your doorstep. Uh, Card Kingdom has great customer service as well. And, you know, there's honestly nothing better than just getting exactly what you need and putting it into a and being able to take it to Lunch Mander or whatever you're doing the very next day. I should also mention that if you do enjoy drafting and you want to buy from cardcam.com slash command, 
this set has the bonus sheet, which is very similar to what March of the Machine had. Yeah. And that made it one of the most memorable and fun draft sets in recent memory because every draft you could just crack open some crazy build around. It's got smothering and, tithe and doubling seed. Yeah, that too, and right? Like, just random value. Yeah, dude, there's so many sweet enchantments that are on this list. And like the Bitter Blossom is reprinted with cool new Eldraine art. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it makes every draft experience as well just like extra fun and spicy. I can't wait to play it on Arena. Uh, so if you want to pick up a box of that, you also can at cardkingdom.com slash command. Pick up that sealed product too. Once you have those cards in your hand, once you build that sweet new deck, go over to ultrapro.com slash command to make sure that deck is safe. Uh, get it some sleeves and a new deck box. Get a matching play mat. Show up yeah. to your next game night and they're like, that guy built Totem Tans. Totem Tans? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, I like him as like a country. Hey, it's me, Totem Tans. Tans. We should tell the writers to write an ad for Totem Tans. For Totem Tans, Swarm Piper. It's just me. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, wow. Uh, you can get all of the accessories that you want for the commander that you're building. Go to Ultra Pro, see if they have the play mats and the sleeves to match, especially if you were building one of the new precon commanders. We didn't talk about all of them. We'll talk about them in the budget upgrades. So yeah. go check those out as well. But you can get all of those sweet accessories at ultrapro.com slash command. And one last shout out again, if you want to audition to be on the fan episode of Game Nights, you can right now. All you have to do is be an active patron of the show. We're going to be picking two people from our Patreon. The exact details and specificity of, of how that work will be in the show notes. All you have to do is sign up to be on our Patreon at patreon.com slash command zone. So make sure you check that out. And you don't want to miss your opportunity. This only comes around once a year. And uh, who knows? It could be your chance to be sitting across myself uh, at the table and making some fun jokes and playing some magic everyone's dream <laughs> thank you for listening but of course thank you to our amazing team here at the command zone thank you to damon lentz eric lem megan yip garav galati jordan pridgen jamie block arthur metacroft manson lung josh murphy jake boss sam waldo evan limberger craig blanchett katie cole mitch trafford gabriel po pozos and how's it Josh Lee Kwai. All right. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Wow. I, that was great. I hooked Mine that. was so bad. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. Oh, no. You're they, not. <laughs> I can't. I can't even get him off the. T oh, that geez. one just wants This one's to cursed. Stay. Okay. Okay. We did It's it. gone. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>